Good afternoon radio listeners. This is Kenneth Washington of WKHM Radio Harlem. I am standing outside the Harlem Casino where some 2,500 people are packed in to witness the trial of the white chauvinist. Yes. The party has put their leader on trial for anti-black racist behavior. We will stay with this story as events unfold. Kenneth Washington. WKHM. From the streets into your homes. This court is now in session. Presided by the Honorable Alfred V. Jenkinaged. The case we will try here is a serious matter. This trial and my role in presiding is held under the authority of the party. It involves the alleged racist actions and beliefs of the defendant August Yokinen. He will be represented by defense counsel, Richard Moore. And Clarence Hathaway will prosecute the case for the party. Today you are all gathered here to witness these proceedings and to benefit from the truth and justice that will be exposed in the examination of these charges of white chauvinism. I ask all present to listen carefully with an open mind and heart as you are presented with facts and arguments about this pernicious system of belief and ignorance that oppresses our brothers and sisters based on the color of their skins. To all persons attending know that your good conduct will be expected by this court and I will enforce any measures to maintain an orderly atmosphere. With that I will give over to the case for the prosecution, Mr. Hathaway, if you please. I thank the court for allowing me to speak. I represent groups of Finnish working women and Finnish women's newspapers here in New York and in America. You can call me the Finnish working woman. The Finnish Working Women's Group has created a report analyzing the events and matters before this court. The report draws from our own women's newspapers and women's groups. I would like to read to you portions of that report. The party's masculine anti chauvinism approach has resulted in a blindness to women's role in the race question. The party has addressed Finnish women in a patronizing manner, asking them to understand the class nature of the race question and to not be seduced by rhetoric about predatory black men. We see that many backward men still think that the race question, like other serious political issues, are only male concerns. This patronizing male attitude is based on the same ancient prejudices as racial chauvinism. Men have been taught from early on that women are only women and that they should only occupy themselves with certain women's issues like cooking, housekeeping and child rearing. Male dismissiveness of women's opinions on race is thus a reflection of the very same problem backward prejudices that the men thought they were addressing with their lofty rhetoric on racial chauvinism. We see clearly that racial oppression is connected to other kinds of chauvinism, especially male chauvinism. It is also connected to the anti foreigner anti-black and anti-woman policies of capitalism. Capitalists use different kinds of division to divide workers and keep them bickering. Women are paid less than men, and black workers are paid less than white workers. These are all parts of the same politics of division. 
We women insist that we should have a say in the race question as mothers. Since women are the ones bringing up the next generation, we are at the forefront of educational work that seeks to root out white chauvinism. Our women's newspapers have long published stories that taught children about the ills of racial prejudice and chauvinism. These women's papers also publish accounts by black writers, translated into Finnish, about their lives, thereby illustrating the unique forms of oppression meted out against black women. As women our view is that there is a complexity of exploitative structures at work here in this question of white chauvinism. These intersecting mechanisms of oppression have many aspects. For example, Finnish men's sexual relations with Holm's black women are connected to the racialized power relations inherent in prostitution. Some Finns in the party are hypocritically unwilling to fight for the rights of poor black people, but are still willing to exploit those Negro daughters who had been forced into brothels by poverty. At the same time racism and sexual jealousy has played a role in these events when black men asked white women to dance. The one-dimensional understanding of oppression as a simple class relation that pits workers against capitalists has often depicted Finnish migrant workers as mere victims of the oppressive system. These immigrants feel at every turn that they are despised in this land, and probably because of this it is comforting to discover that there are people in this country for whom even the despised immigrants could show their contempt and claim themselves to be white persons belonging to the better race. So, Finnish migrants, despite being exploited as workers themselves and despised as for a born, have used their whiteness as a means to separate themselves from a group of people who were even more despised and oppressed in American society. Thus, they contributed to the double oppression of blacks in America. There is a color discrimination in America that keeps black people at the bottom rung of the ethnic hierarchy. Even the children of the poorest white parents are taught from early on to show their contempt for the Negroes and to showcase their belonging to the better race. Finnish immigrants have used whiteness in order to claim Americanness. I will conclude by saying that of course Finns are not alone in these attitudes and beliefs. Other immigrant groups have followed in these same oppressive footsteps of white chauvinism. That is why it is important to examine our own roles, as individuals, as members of an ethnic group, and as members of a social class in the fight against racism. Thank you.